Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we'll start putting together the weather forecast application. It's a very a fun, simple, but fun application that will allow us to get the weather forecast and the current temperature or current weather at a certain place. We are going to be using the weather API from yahoodeveloper.com. This one here, it's very interesting. So if you go to developer, developer.yahoo.com weather this is what you're going to see so the cool thing about this the developer network yahoo developer network is that they let us query their tables or their database and uh, and then it spits out a json api as you can see here we can actually go inside uh, there's two options of course for responses we have json which is our preferred method and we have xml I don't like XML. We like JSON. <laughs> okay. And so, but the beauty here is that you can actually do a certain query. If you go to YQL console, click on that. That stands for Yahoo Query Language. What happens is that you see at the top here, there's a select all from this is indeed the table where we're getting it from, where ID. We're going to pass in the ID. In this case, we want to geo places and where text is spoken. So if you change this text here to something else, let's say you want to say Mumbai, like this, test, and then you should have the information about the weather for Mumbai. This is JSON. I want this formatted. There we go. And you can see we have now all of the query or all of the response in JSON format. It says here Mumbai gives the date. Today is Friday the 17th, 2017, and it's 3.16 a.m. in India. Okay, it's pretty early. Anyway, and then we have wind, object, atmosphere, tells us everything. The conditions for Mumbai, latitude, longitude, has links, has date and tells exactly the temperature or the sky condition. In this case, is mostly clear, which is quite nice. I wish we had the same weather here in Spokane, Washington. It's really cold, and I don't think I like the cold anymore. Anyway, the next thing we have is forecast. So you see here is actually an array which contains objects containing the forecast, the date, the day, high, low, and text. Okay, so we are going to be consuming this JSON endpoint here to for us to be able to then fetch all of this information. So users will be able to pass a text, a query. In this case, you pass in your location. Let's say you want to say Lisbon test, and you should be able to see information about Lisbon. Lisbon concerning the temperature and the weather forecast. Okay, let's go to Mozambique, my home. Mozambique. Well, I think it'd be a good idea to say, for instance, beta Mozambique. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see. Mozambique, it's 11.48 p.m. It's pretty late over there. All this great information about my hometown. Ooh, scattered thunderstorms. Hmm. Not fun. Okay, perfect. So we have this place where we're going to be able to get all of this information. And if you are curious about the developer that yahoo.com and their tables and so forth, uh, I would encourage you to just look around. And for instance, there's example queries. If you want to get image from Flickr, you can use that as well. Get San Francisco Geo data. I mean, there's so many things you can actually use right away if you are feeling adventurous okay let's go ahead and start putting together the application well as you may have already guessed i am fast on my feet meaning that i already created my project here i called it weather forecast you name it whatever you feel like naming that's the beauty of this course that's the beauty here is that you are in control but if you want to follow along, if you want to make sure that uh, things are uniform between you and be between what you're doing and what I'm doing, I suggest you name the same thing, right? So create a project, call it Weather Forecast. And I'm very confident that you are able to do that. 
perfect. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and start putting together the actual user interface. But before, you know the tradition, I'm going to go ahead and give it a run because I just like to make sure things are working, even though we haven't done anything here, but it's always a good idea to make sure that things are indeed in place. And voila, there we go. We have the very bare minimum application here project. Not too bad, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of a few things in our user interface. Go to design here, get rid of that. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get, let's go to colors, because we already have a lot of colors that we can actually add to our application. So when I click here, and I'm going to copy from my previous project the color or the, the all the colors. So I'm gonna just get rid of all of this, control V, and there we go. So from the color palette for material design in Android. So if you follow this URL, you will see where this lives. So where are we getting it from, right? So we have red and with all of the colors that go with the red theme, we have pink and so forth, so many of them. I encourage you to do this because then it's easier for you to find colors and use in your application. It's always a good idea, okay? And you notice also here, we changed the color of our application or the branding of our application because these are indeed the colors that you will see throughout your app. Let's give it a run so we can actually see. And look at that. Okay. Now if we feel that this is not a color that we want, we can go ahead and change a few things here, folks. Click here. And let's say we want something greener. Okay, if you feel like it. Maybe like that, we can choose that. This one, we can go here. Maybe that, okay, if you feel that's the color you need, you can do that as well. There we go, I kinda like this, this is much better. All right, that's great. All right, so while we're here, what we're gonna do now is we are going to add at the top here an edit text or a place where a user is going to be able to add search query. Okay, so I'm going to put it right there. So let's go to our main here. I'm going to go and find edit text. They call it text. They used to be called edit text, but nowadays I think the naming inside of our widgets has changed. Let's find this plain text. And I'm going to put right there. Make sure it is that. It's perfect. I'm going to call this called location name ID as such. And for the text, I'm going to get rid of that because we don't want that. But I'm going to add a, a hint text. So I'm going to click here. And I'm going to go say resource, new string. And this resource name is going to be location underscore hint. And the resource value is going to be enter location. So we can see there it is. You won't see the way it will look, but if you save this and give it a run right now, we should see that this is indeed working. Hopefully, there we go. It looks very nice. Um, how about make it across the entire screen? So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to say match constraint as that. Okay, let's save this, give it a run. There we go. That looks really nice. So they can start adding text. So the next thing we're going to do here is below, I'm going to put a card view so we can put some text in there. Okay, let's go and find a card view. Search card view. There it is. We will probably be prompt to actually import. Oh, we didn't. That's perfect. I like that. All right.
All right, we have our card view. All right, our card view is there. Let's add something, some things into our card view. In fact, let's make, okay, let's go to text here. Let's go to give a height of maybe 190 dp so we can actually see it. And why not add a constraint? Let me add that there. For some reason, it's not doing it. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and give it a quick run just to see how things are looking. All right, so it's up there. So we need to constrain our card view with and our edit text because as you can see now, everything is not correct. In fact, you can notice, you see here that we have an issue. If you hover over, it says this view is not constrained for... All right, so let's go back to our design here. We add a constraint there. Let's save, give it a quick run and see. There we go much much better now I don't like this size this is too much let's make this smaller because actually we need to for this size I'm gonna say how about 90 okay so 90 that looks good let's put a few things let's go ahead and add a few things let's add a few attributes let's go ahead and add text view inside of our card view here I'm gonna go ahead and say text view there it is. Notice I can just drag it, put inside of a card view. There it is. Very nicely done. But before I do that, let me add a relative layout here. That way we can organize things better. I'm going to say relative layout. I'm going to add inside there. And I'm going to pull, put this inside of a relative layout. Ah, very nice. So we could have done that, of course, in our text and our code here. But it's always nice to also know that we can do the same things inside of our design mode here, which is pretty handy. Okay, so now we have that. And let's see, next thing I'm going to add is, I'm going to add perhaps, uh, let me add an image view. I'm going to say image view. Let's find this one. I'm going to put right about there. Of course, when you put image views, it assumes that you want to add an image view. That's why this pops up. No problem. For now, I'm going to just add one of these launchers icons. In fact, I just want a different one. Let's click here. I want the... How about this one? Sure. There we go. And I want to make sure height is about 60 dp i want the width to be about 60 dp as well okay so about like that small and let me move this in fact i think it'll be a good idea to move this to the left oops i'm gonna move this below there such okay it's looking really good let me go to text here I just want to see what else can I do let me restructure everything here I'm gonna get rid of this I'm gonna get rid of that as well and this I'm gonna call this weather icon and I'm going to move this text to about to the right here. In fact, I'm going to say to right of ID weather icon. There we go. And I want to make it and put it in the middle here. I'm going to say center horizontal to be true. Center, center in parent to be true. There we go. It's in the middle there. And this, instead of text view, I'm going to just say location. Say location text view as such ID. Okay. There we go. Let's give it a little padding about 10 dp. Okay, that looks really good. I'm going to make this text size. How about about 15 SP? A little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it bold style. 
text style. I'm going to make it bold. There we go. Okay. And right here, I'm going to add in a text view. This text view is going to wrap content. And I'll give an ID. It's going to be current temp ID as such. I want this to be to the left or end of our weather. Actually, our location text view ID just right there. But I also want it. In fact, I want this to do right. Let me put it to the end. Let's see. Right align parent right true. Like that. Say text. I'm going to say center in parent to be true. So it's in the middle of the parent, which in this case is the card view. And I'm going to give a text so we can see something. For now, I'm going to just pass in the name. Let's say padding about 10 dp. In fact, to make sure, I'm going to go and say to right of ID location like that. This is way better because now you notice know, always going to be to the right of this text view here, which is good because we don't want this to overlap. And to make sure I want this to be really big, so I'm going to say text size to be about 19 SP. It's going to be, in fact, let's change this to just put a string of 19 degrees. Well, let's say F. Okay. All right. So it's all going to be to make a lot of more sense once we start putting data. Maybe a little bit bigger. How about 30? Mm, 45. There we go. I like that. Very nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and give it a save and quick run here and see our prod and see. Very nice. Okay, I like the way they I like the way things are looking. Okay. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll finish up our user interface and then we'll move on to actually fetching the data that we're going to be placing in our app. And the cool thing that we're going to be doing here is that we are going to use view pagers here or tab layout, which will allow us to scroll left or right. And each time we're going to have the forecast for the day, depending on which location they have entered at the top. Right? It's going to be pretty cool. I'm very excited. Okay. I'll see you in the next video.